Let's see, did that work? I think that might have worked. I'm, I'm seeing it here. Hi, my name is Veronica. Welcome to Veronica Explains Live. This is a fun show where apparently my phone goes off. Um, <laughs> I forgot to put my phone on. Do not disturb. Anyway, hi, everybody. I see we got a few people um, waiting in the chat. So, hi. Um, I'm trying some different things with my OBS setup and and just just kind of experimenting around with it. So hopefully this works okay. This is actually the first time I've done this with an actual factual laptop in a live stream. So with the capture card and you know the whole thing. So hopefully it works out okay. Hi everybody. I'm seeing a bunch of people showing up. Hi, hi. I, I, I hope this is working okay. So I wanted to touch base about what we're doing here today. I've got a USB stick that I loaded up with the most recent Pop! OS uh, beta, the 22.04. And I have this laptop, which let's see if I can switch to it. I'm going to show you pictures of the laptop right now because it's kind of exciting. It's an actual laptop. Okay, now you can probably hear me. So this is this is the laptop that I'm working with here today, and it is a um, a ProBook G or G1650 HP laptop. It's it's quite a few years old at this point, but it is the laptop that I have available to me that doesn't currently have Arch on it or something else that I'm doing with another video. So I figured, why not? Let's install it. And that's my uh, sticker collection on it, which I thought would be kind of interesting to show. It is real hardware, um, not fake, which is exciting. Let's see. Uh, there, there, okay, there we go. I'm still figuring out how all this this um, OBS stuff works. What I need is I need to rig up my MIDI controller again so I can actually control all this with the MIDI controller because I think that would be super fantastic. Um, but anyway, I, I don't want to take too much time before we actually get into the live install bit of this. Um, but I wanted to touch base on where I got this stuff from and just show what this looks like. So let's see if I can switch. There we go. Okay, so I got the Pop! OS beta off of their GitHub, which is Pop! OS or GitHub.com slash Pop! OS slash beta. And um, I saw, I think Jeremy Solar was tweeting about it, which is exciting. It says bugs are expected, reinstalls likely. I'm not doing this on my production machine yet. Um, I might do this on my actual live laptop in a minute. But I've already downloaded it because I didn't want to mess with the um, download time and all that. And I've already uh, flashed it to a USB stick, which is exciting. Um, you, it gives you some information if you're upgrading an existing. I'm not upgrading an existing. I'm just going to go full blast into this thing. So, without further ado, um, let's dive in. Let's see if this works. There we go. Okay. So, I think now I'm small and the capture card is saying no signal, which makes sense because I haven't turned the laptop on. Now, I will say about this laptop... This is the laptop from hell. Um, this is not my favorite laptop for working with this sort of thing because it has some goofy issue with the BIOS. I haven't been able to figure out exactly what's going on with it, but I have to set the drive to IDE mode. It doesn't seem to work on AHCI, which is weird if I want to get it to boot Linux. And I haven't played with Intel issues or, you know, that sort of thing, but I, I want to give this a try live. We'll just see how it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I can always boot up a VM if, if push comes to shove. Or we can maybe boot it from the demo mode, boot it from live. Let's see. So let's dive in. I just started it up. I'm going to hit F9 a bunch of times. Howdy, folks. You probably can't see this part of it. Yep, this doesn't have this particular laptop doesn't have a mirror. Um, it says I can just show me right now. This particular laptop that I'm using doesn't have a mirror that shows 
uh, what's on the screen. Right now it's doing the whole boot up sequence, which is good. It, it looks good. I wish I could show you. Um, once I can get it to mirror mode, then you'll actually be able to see what I'm doing, which is exciting. In the meantime, let's see, waiting for a Pine Phone Pro Fosh video. Ooh, I, so I recently acquired a Pine Phone from, um, from a friend of mine named Socket Wench on, uh, Twitter. Um, go check her out. Her stuff's great. Um, all pitch black, just like the beginning of the universe. It's true. That's, it's one theory about it. So are we calling it the ThinkPad yet? <laughs> this one's not the ThinkPad. This is, so this, a little bit about this laptop. This was my first Arch laptop. Um, I actually bought this laptop in like 2015, 2016 for my freelance work. And at the time I'd been pretty steady in Ubuntu. And I decided I want to give something else a try. It had been a while since I distro hopped and I decided, you know, forget it. Let's, let's do Arch. And I did it and it worked. It was actually really good. Um, and I kept this thing on Arch for probably about two years. Um, and I would run any Windows stuff I needed, I'd run in a VM and it was fine. Um, but I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I ended up replacing it with newer laptops as time went on. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit of an older model now. Let's see. I think you're going to do a Samba video. I would love to do a Samba video. I've been, oh, we just booted. I've been thinking about doing a Samba video with, there it is. Um, I've been thinking about doing a Samba video with cockpit and talking about Samba and cockpit and combining those. I think that would be fun. I'm going to set up mirroring if it lets me. There we go. Okay. That way you can see what I see because that would be nice. One of the reasons I picked this laptop is this is one of the only laptops I have around with a 1080 display. Um, a lot of mine are 720 and it's not great. Um, or at least they, they only work with 720 with my particular capture card. Okay. It's doing its thing. Hopefully it works soon. Okay. So you can see it. All right. So the only thing you missed is, is me doing that and the initial boot up, which felt like it was slower than I'm used to, but admittedly I'm on very old hardware. So it's quite possible that would be the reason it would be going slow. Okay, so we're at the installer. Let's play. I'm gonna select English, United States, it's fine with me. Oh, I should mention I'm doing an ethernet connection, um, not doing wireless. I suspect this wireless card is not going to have any issues because anytime I've put a Linux on here in the last five years, it's not had any issues with the Wi-Fi card. Um, I know sometimes that's a thing people want to see. I didn't suspect we'd have an issue here and it's just easier if I used an ethernet connection for a live stream. um, installer. Uh, I, it's the, it looks like the same installer from last time. I think that's the Calamari's installer. I'm, I'm not totally sure. Um, it's not the Ubuntu installer. So we're just going to do a clean install. I'm going to kill everything. We're going to try it. Hope it works. There's nothing on here of value. It's a 256 gig solid state drive that I've got in here. So that should be pretty easy. Set my coffee down. Creating a user account. It's easy. Password. Shh. Okay. I'm not going to do encryption here just because I don't think I need to. Um, this computer's not going to be used for anything. It's probably never going to leave the house. I do use their Lux encryption with my production stuff um, running Pop! OS. I, I think it seems like it's fine. I, if I lose the password, then I'm, I'm, I'm done. But um, yeah, I think it works okay. Okay, somebody said the Calamari installer is the Manjaro one. Nowhere near the polish. I haven't used the Manjaro installer in a while. I, I don't remember the last time I actually ran Manjaro. Um, probably two years at least. 
I wish I had. I, I'm I'm shopping for overlay stuff right now to do um, overlay so you can see the comments on here. I can just like dump the actual chat into OBS, but I kind of want to do the call out thing. I saw Tom Lawrence do that in a couple of his live streams and it looks really cool. Um, and that's where I got this shirt, by the way, is Tom Lawrence's um, uh, merch shop. So that's that's exciting. I'm not wearing my own merch today. I do have a merch shop though at vkc.sh slash merch, which I'll talk about later in the video probably. Um, we are installing. Okay, let's see. Chris McGraw writes, this robot image looks like Eve in the Wally movie. I've always thought that. Um, password, YouTube channel. Shh. Um, it's definitely not the Ubiquity installer. Somebody said, I don't think that's Ubiquity, and I think that's accurate. Oh, hey, Addy. Um, I don't know how YouTube Live works. I'm used to Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how Twitch works. I'm used to YouTube Live. Um, let's see. Greetings from Australia. Hi, Australia. Okay, while this is running... Beat Bob, pass it. Beat Bob, one-on-one. -on -one. Beat Bob, solo. Shall we? take like 20 minutes and no <laughs> so now i know they do this split startup where now i'm going to do a restart and then i'm going to create some some new stuff so let's let's give that a try um you know what i'm actually going to shut down so that way i can take the usb stick out okay so it's shutting down i think you can see some of that hello from denmark hi Ooh. I see SM, oh, SM Oliva. I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry, but um, they have an excellent blog about the Computer Chronicles show, which is definitely worth checking out. Um, I love that show. You can catch that on YouTube too. Okay, booting it up. Moment of truth. See if it works. You can't see it black screen nope boot device not found oh jeez <laughs> i can't find the boot device okay this is exactly the kind of thing that happened before um well see if i can tell it where the boot device is if this doesn't work we're just going to try it again with the demo because i don't yep got nothing it is so bad. Okay, should I try to diagnose it? Should I try to fix it here on the live stream? Knowing that you can't see it. Um, I wonder if I can turn it. <laughs> this is so, so funny. Okay, let's see. Um, I'll make it bigger. Okay, so it's so bad. All right. I told you this is like just the worst laptop. So I got this error. It says boot device not found. This is not because I'm using Pop! OS. I'm just going to throw that out there. This has happened any distro I install in here and I have to go through and tweak the settings to get it to work. So let's see if I can make it work. I think F10 is my BIOS. Now it comes up with this hardware diagnostics UEFI. This hardware diagnostics UEFI always tells me everything passed. I don't think there's anything wrong with the hardware. I've tried swapping the solid state drives. I've tried swapping the RAM. Nothing seems to fix this issue. And it does boot and it does recognize the hard drive. You saw me install it just a minute ago. I'm seeing a lot of people. HP sucks. Yeah, I, I, I don't buy an HP nowadays. I'll put it that way. My favorite HP laptop was the EliteBook 840G2, which they of course don't sell anymore, and the newer Elite Books, I don't, I don't like them as much. Okay, I'm trying to make this so you can, you, you can't see that. Okay, let's see. Is there any way I can make this visible? Probably not. This is bad. Okay, so. Let's see if I can get it. I'm wondering. 
Nope, it's not there. Boot options. Okay, I'm going to try moving it into uh, UEFI mode. Let's try that first. I try to do one thing at a time when I'm testing something like this. If you mess with like 50 things at a time, it's not going to work. No bootable image. Okay, so that didn't work. Boot it up. Go into F10. Open up the BIOS. Tap, 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 tap. I need a tapa, tapa, tapa. Ooh, Esnix is here. Hi, Esnix. Esnix has Easy Archer, I believe, which is really fun. Ooh, Jeremy. Jeremy's in. Hi, Jeremy. Calling in UEFI mode only is probably best. You want me to try it? I can try UEFI mode. I wish I could show you what the screen says. It, this particular laptop does not have a mechanism for me to show you what the BIOS says, which makes it not the best for live stream, let me tell you. At least not live stream BIOSing or EFIing. Um, anyway, we are in full UEFI mode now. So, you know what? I'm going to take Jeremy's suggestion. Let's try reinstalling it. Where did I get my repair manifesto from? That's um, this thing right here. And I believe just ifixit.com. Big fan of iFixit. You know what? It doesn't even see. Nope. It doesn't even see the uh, installer. Jeez. Well, I have another idea. I was thinking. I got that ThinkPad. And I've got... <laughs> a little solid state drive. Do we think I should try it on the ThinkPad and just swap out the disks? Yep, virtual machine. Yep, people are people are talking about the uh, virtual machine. Now, um, I mean, I'll do that if we have to, but I'd really rather not. Um, okay, so... Boot options. Just make sure USB boot is on on UEFI mode. Let's try legacy mode. Why not? Let's make sure. Let's just rule that out right now. Let's see. This is exciting. It's a rip roaring good time here. But this is what it's like to install Linux on much older hardware. <laughs> Newer hardware seems to do really well. Um, at least in my experience, anything made since 2018. I, I don't have much of a hard time getting it installed. You know, I've done Dells, HPs, Lenovo's. It's not that bad. Okay, let's see. Nope, boot device not found. It doesn't like it there either. Um, I'm seeing people go, yep, yeah, go ThinkPad. Let's try the ThinkPad. Okay. We're going to do it. This is going to be real fun. Okay, I have all these adapters. Now, here's one nice thing about this ThinkPad. I know the ThinkPad does let me show you what's going on in the BIOS, so I won't have to worry about that. This thing can go away. That was probably really loud. I just realized I'm wearing a microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I got the ThinkPad right here. 
course, it's going to have a different charger. Look at that. ThinkPad. Okay. But I don't, I don't want this thing to be, I don't want to remove my Arch install because I have plans for it. So I have to pull out my Fix-It kit. Addy says, I think it's been a while, but I think that was the issue with my HP. Yep. Okay. It's a lot of screws. Well, in the meantime, while I'm removing things, I wonder if there's a way I can show you what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to pick up the... You know what? I'm just going to do it. Why not? Here we go. Here's my desk. It's all kinds of messy. <laughs> this is definitely a... Oh, there we go. Yep, it's perfect. Definitely thinking this ahead. Okay. So, what are we up to today? How's everybody's Sunday going? Which ThinkPad is it? It's the E490. Um, I made a video about it a couple videos ago. I've never opened this up, at least not yet. I don't think I opened this up. This is where somebody's going to say, I need a second camera just to look down. You're not wrong. This could be like a fun... I could do this every Sunday. Like, Veronica works on a laptop. I'd have to score it or something. What do I think of FreeBSD? I like FreeBSD. Um, I have to say I'm kind of a fan. Um, let's see, I'm not paying close attention to which screws I'm unscrewing. So that'd be fun. Okay, I think. Let's see. Now, how do I open this thing up? This looks like it's one piece. Okay, I can see there's a little lip form in here. So I think I don't want to use my fingernail for that. I will use my iFixit kit. Comes with a little pick. These iFixit kits are great because you can throw it in a bag and pretty much call it a day. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, the only Windows machine I have is my T470, only PC laptop that hasn't failed me or made me sad. Yeah, Lenovo, I mean, they, they know what they're doing. They make a pretty decent product. My wife and I both, for our main machines, are using System76 machines, which work very well, at least for our main laptops. My desktop is not a, um, it's, it's something I built myself. Okay, I think we're opening up. I hope I got all the screws. They feel like they're those captive screws, so like I didn't have to actually remove them. Nope. Hang on. I hope this is exciting entertainment for you all. I feel like I need to score this. Like I need to be singing something. Do do do. Do do do. Do 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 ba do ba do do do. I get everything. Beat up, ba ba da, beat up, ba. Rip it open. Which model? It's the E four ninety. It was not my original plan, but I was prepared in case something went wrong with the first one. I'm thinking that old, my old. HP probably won't make another appearance on the streams. And I would probably do this business beforehand. I cannot get this thing open. Is there like a secret screw? Maybe I just didn't get this one. Come on. Come on. Am I missing something here? Because 
Because it feels like it should have popped out by now. The screw, maybe? Oh, yep. Okay, that feels much better. Moment of truth. Woo! Okay. It's open. Why am I doing this? Um, <laughs> so mine, mine, uh, so I was going to use an HP, which I got over there, and I'll probably show it in a minute, but the HP, uh, it's an older model, and it is having BIOS issues, and it always has BIOS issues. Like, with any install I've ever done, I, I have to play with the BIOS in order to get it to work. And I don't know exactly what's wrong with it. But so this has arch on it and I don't want to get rid of it. So we're just going to set that aside. I'm going to do. I don't know what this is, but we're going to get rid of it. Got my M.2 screw. I'm not wearing anti-static. So that's done. That was a little bit painful, but it's not as bad as some lap. I've got a MacBook Pro I've been meaning to try to install something on, and holy cow, I'm not looking forward to that. Okay, I'm just going to get a couple of these in. I don't know what's in this on this um this drive and i'm not going to find out we're just going to bomb it out and we're going to try that okay so i'll show this off real quick there we go it's not too bad this is my so i think i've decided we're going to name it thinky mcthinkface because <laughs> that was the name that came up the most um I mean, I don't know how creative it is. It's kind of sort of creative. Okay, let's see. We've got to get this done. Okay, we got that. And then uh, let's do Ethernet. There's a live stream after all. Hopefully some of you are still here. And um, I'm going to need power. Which I think I've got a USB-C plug under me. So I mentioned, I mentioned on Twitter here, I'll aim the camera back at me. Hi. Um, so I mentioned on Twitter, I, I'm, I've been having an issue with these MacBook Pro plugs doing something weird where on some laptops, like a Dell is one of them, it won't boot up if it's plugged in. Um, and it'll hang sometimes if I plug this in. I don't know if it's that the MacBook charger has a chip in it or something. Um, if anybody knows and wants to leave a comment, you know, I'll go back through later and look. Let's see. So, in the meantime, let's get this fired up. I don't remember what the boot key sequence is on this. Let's see. Is it F12? Boot key. F10? F12? Oh, I can't see it. That's right, I already switched this one so I could record with it. Okay. I'll try that again and see if I can get it booted. And see if I can see it. It's sending the output to the HDMI. Oh, it's enter. There we go. Okay. Okay, let's see if I can make this so you can see it. Okay, and then come on. Come on. Let's do um, F12. F8 if I just want to boot from CD. That's good to know. Um, F8. 
I think my I think my capture card locked up a bit. Hang on. Let's fix it. Cause it seems to think nothing's plugged in. Um Okay, let's see if that works. It's saying no signal. I can see it here. Come on. I love troubleshooting on the fly. That's always fun. Okay, I'm getting the ready to go. I wonder if I should just, I wonder, I wonder if my HDMI cable needed to be plugged in at start. Why isn't the boot key a uh, standard? Would like to know the real reason for that. Yes, that is a good question. There's the I think the boot sequence stuff should all be standardized because um, I hate not knowing if I'm tapping F12 over and over again or F10 or escape or enter, you know, whatever. I It would be nice if we got that all standardized. Very much so. Simon's following along at home. Thanks, Simon. You know, a lot of this wouldn't be an issue if on, um, like, a, like if you actually bought a laptop that was designed around Linux. Like, that's that's not going to be the problem. One of my issues with, with this is that they clearly, this is my HP that I was using earlier, they clearly aren't, weren't intending on Linux usage when they designed the thing. Um... Yeah, I think my capture card, I'm going to unplug and plug it in. Because I'd like you to be able to see this. Earth, my capture card is not seeing it.
Okay. I think my audio might be back now. I know why. I have it set to try to pull the audio off of the, the capture card. I am so sorry. Okay. Sorry, everybody. All right. Let's see. Got it. Live TV, everybody. Let's try it. Let's see if it boots now. And let's see if it shows you what it's doing. It does not seem to be showing you what it's doing. It says it's taking it in. So, going into BIOS. Config, display. Save and exit. Yes. Let's see if that does anything. Because it'd be nice if I could show you what I was doing. Startup device. Store and go. That's my little flash drive. Whoop. That looks better. VMs are much better for making videos. Yes, I, I, I tend, because I can actually like troubleshoot a VM beforehand. Um, one of the things, I, I got a lot of feedback saying they wanted to see it on live hardware. So I'm showing you live hardware. Um, but I think we got it. I think it's, it's working now. I think this, this is gonna be stupid. I don't think I had my HDMI cable plugged in all the way. I think that's what was happening. Kind of stupid stuff, but... Okay. Hey, but you get to see me take apart a ThinkPad. I mean, that's kind of fun. Okay. <sighs> Things are fun, aren't they? Okay, let's see. Nothing beats real hardware, though. I um, Radical says, nothing beats real hardware. I mean, real hardware is fun. If you use a VM, it doesn't show an honest review, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I mean, it depends on what you're reviewing, I think. If you're, if you're reviewing the actual hard... Like, a lot of what we're seeing here with hardware issues, I mean, on, on this beast thing yeah you were seeing a real like that's a hardware problem and i just didn't want to diagnose it on a screen you couldn't see um a lot of what we're seeing here right now though is honestly just problems with my capture card and this whole workflow i could see what was happening um i just wanted you to be able to see and i do think there's something to be gained from doing a real live install and test and all that Okay, so you should be able to see it now. We're doing the whole thing again. It's fun on a Sunday. I've been thinking about if we, if I want to do these more often. Um, I get a lot of people saying they want to do it. They want to see it. And it's something I'm thinking about. It's, it's, some of it is just, you know, finding time. And if I made it like the same time each week, I think that'd be better. But then, you know, there's time zones and not everybody can participate at a certain time each week and, you know, all that. Veronica is the Linux mom I never had. Hi, I'm, I'm a Linux mom. That's true. Um, clean install. Let's kill what whatever was on this thing. I don't even know. I don't, I don't want to find out. Devices on battery power. Ooh, okay. Hang on. I might unplug. Yep, I unplugged. Okay. Hang on. There goes Veronica. Actually, you can probably still hear me because I'm wearing a mic. Okay, am I still wearing a mic? All right. 
There we go. That's much better. Until I wasn't prepared to use this one. All right, VKC, that's me. I'm not going to do encryption just because I don't need to right this minute. There we go. So confusingly, while this is ha oh, it failed. <gasps> Ooh, what happened? It failed due to a hardware error. Detailed logs were written to temp installer. I, okay, first of all, gotta say, I love this. picture of the, the explosion like that's cute that's super cute um oh that's funny your device may not restart properly let's see um so hardware errors i mean you know i have to say i found this this my the the m2 i put in there the the nvme i don't know if it's any good <laughs> I didn't do any test. I just saw it and I was like, you know what? I can install this thing. Um, there might be a reason I took it out of whatever laptop it was in before. Um, should we demo it? Should we see what we can do? Okay. Secure boot. Disable secure boot. Um, I don't know. I don't think this thing has secure boot on in the first place because it's running Arch. It's running Arch. It's not going to have secure boot. Um, at least I don't think I ever turned on secure boot. Um, shoot, where did it say it was keeping that thing? You know what? Okay, should we do a VM or should we demo from the live demo? Who wants to see do from the live demo? Terminal icon for more info. Okay. Yep. Yep. Wouldn't be able to boot. Yep. I was going to say, let's do list out the temp directory. Oh, I'll make this bigger. Um, that way people can see it. Okay. Let's list out temp. And let's cat out that temp installer log error errored while installing system discommit error failed to commit lib part ed changes to sda no such device address that's interesting so let's have let's just see maybe i should have taken a look at this it looks like it's blank should I give it a partition table and then try again? It's not secure boot. I really honestly... Oh, Jeremy's saying do D-message. Um, let's see. Let's try it. I was going to say, I don't know what the pseudo password is for the default user. Um, Jeremy, was there anything in here you wanted to see? I'm wondering about this drive. Jeremy says, looks like there's a kernel panic. I'm trying to, I'm reading the chat here. It's not secure boot, folks. I, I, secure boot's not on. I like I I'm very confident that unless unless system 76 got pop OS secure boot set up I don't think I'd be able to boot into this USB drive if secure boot was on in the first place yeah I'm wondering about this NVMe thing I don't know Jeremy did you have uh yeah Addy says nuke the drive that's exactly what I was thinking about doing but Somebody says, go Arch. Did you see my last video? Should we just try it again? See what happens? Why not? Yep, 
Yes, thank you. Software Livre says, it is not secure boot because I wouldn't have been able to boot into the live CD in the first place. That's exactly it. I, th this, the, the, I'm sure this ISO is not secure boot set up. So like if I was able to boot into it, it's not secure boot. Um, I wouldn't be here in the first place. I mean, I do wonder if maybe it's not seated correctly, but it seemed to be registering. I would think it wouldn't have even booted up. Don't encrypt. Yep, okay. It's It seems to be freaking out on the HCI. I don't think it's HCI. All right. Well, I'm going to show, let's make sure Secure Boot is not set up because I'm reasonably certain we can throw that out. Um, let's do F1. You can't see this, of course. Here. So, let's see. Moment of truth. Secure boot. Let's make sure. Secure boot. I don't know if you can see that. It's already disabled. There's no secure boot. So that is not our issue. Let's try. I'm just wondering if we can do. I'm tempted to say I should just try it again. Yep, UEFI, secure boot off. AHC, somebody's suggesting, um, where did I see that? AHCI, if it's not the AHCI thing, should I try it? I mean, I can try it. Then I think if that doesn't work, I'm going to call it and we're going to do a VM. But this is what, I mean, this is this is what it's like to be playing with firmware and hardware and all the fun. Um, let's see. Where do you actually configure? Now I'm wondering where where do i actually set up the uh device mode somewhere there's all kinds of fun no 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 security it doesn't like it I don't just don't see a storage option for like playing with the, the storage. Um, but I'm not used to this particular BIOS or EFI either. Um, you know what? This is boring. So I'm going to we're going to try it again. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Let's do exit. Of course, you can't see it, which is ever so fun. Waiting for that screen. There we go. You heard the beep. Temporary startup device. Let's show myself. Yeah, manual partitioning is not boring. It's a mystery to solve. I like that. That's thank you, Andy. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Um, is the screen blue? That's odd. Hopefully the screen doesn't stay like this forever because it's kind of weird. There we go. Don't know what that was about.
More of a teal. Yep. <laughs> Tell me what color that was. Leave a comment below. This is not going the way I thought it would, but I'm actually kind of having fun, so that's a good deal. See, I think it's fun. Like, I'm, there's no, I don't, I'm not feeling any pressure. This is fun. I'm chatting. I only wish I had a way to pop up, like, the, the questions that I'm answering. I gotta, I gotta figure that out. Maybe next week. Let's see. It's coming. I should bust out the bop it now, except by the time I get started, it'll actually be starting. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to accept that the issue here might actually be that that, that that NVMe drive I popped in isn't any good. Oh. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm I'm trying to get it so you can see. I want you to see what I'm seeing. Mirror. Apply. Okay, there we go. All right. So, let's try it again. Just booted. Let's try clean install. There's me. Password. Don't encrypt. It's partitioning. It's partitioning. It's partitioning. Hello, computer. I mean, it's doing this little, like, the, the, the flame is coming out, so that, that might be a good sign. Maybe. Ooh, ooh. I think it might be working. Okay, it's extracting the files. All right. Should I do some bop it? Why is the installer showing an ATA device? It might be showing an ATA device because it's on ATA mode. That that might very well be. Um, it's definitely something. Well, no, I I thought it was. I, I I don't know. Let's see. Dang weird. Glad it's working. Me too. Yes, bop it. Um, so the issue was turn it off and turn it on again. Addy asks. Yes, the issue was turn it off and turn it on again. And apparently, I have to do this thing. Why I chose Pop! OS? Well, I chose Pop! OS for this just fun Sunday because there's a new beta out and I want to play with it. Um, why I used Pop! OS is I, I just did a video about it actually a little bit ago, but it's um, dynamic tiling, stacking, workspaces. It It is the combination of the desktop environment ability to get around with the tiling and stacking of a window manager, for me, that has become my required workflow. I, I, I have a, a much easier time getting work done on this kind of workflow than on a, a either a traditional tiling window manager, which has fewer bells and whistles, um, you know, tends to be a little bit more putsy, which is fine. I like putzing around. Um, but this, it just feels cleaner to me. It just feels easier for me to just get work done. Um, I also like dynamic workspaces. That's something that I think the team at System76 with Pop! OS have done exceptionally well. Um, keeping that in the way that I have thought about it for the last several years, I, I, I feel like it looks really good. Um, I basically, I just really like what they're doing. I think Ubuntu is a fine base. Um, I feel like the team at System76 does a good job of it. Let's see. Yep, Addy. I mean, I've heard this so many times. Addy points out, I can't stand GNOME, but I love Cosmic. That's exactly it. Like the the any of the the bugs I've had with um with with GNOME, 
I feel like cosmic more than than makes up for the changes in that workflow. Like you get a doc, you get um, smart window management. I mean, I love it. I think it's great. Um, error incoming, somebody says. Um, I hope not. Okay, I'm gonna shut down. Mainly because I want to unplug the the flash drive. I don't know if you even have to do that. It might be smart enough. I just don't know how I set set up this device. Okay, you know what? I didn't even get to pop it. I didn't think I had pass it mode on. Okay. You know what? We're about to be in. <laughs> of course, you can't see this. It's signing me in. So that's a good sign. Should pop back up in a minute. Okay. So I need to... It's, I can see it, but I want you to be able to see it. Is it not going to let me access the, uh, go to settings. Okay. And then, um, displays I'm trying to make it so you can see mirror. There we go. Okay. All right. So, sorry about that. So now, um, let's see. Should I do no dock? Dock extends to the edges or dock doesn't extend to the edges. I tend to like the, I, I don't like the dock extending to the edges thing. That, that's just me. Um, does anybody like the dock extending to the edges? Who likes that versus who likes the, the classic kind of condensed dock? I'm a fan of the condensed dock. Third option. Yep, third option. Does Super P go to the display setting? Should we find out? It does. Hey, look at that. I could. I didn't. I didn't know it did that. That's kind of neat. I don't want to actually change it now. Somebody likes the edgy docs. Okay, that's good. Ooh, we're already getting updates. That's that's nifty. I'm gonna go with Doc doesn't extend. That this tends to be how I like it. Um, I don't know how people can work without a dock. That's just me. I, I, I don't get it. Um, dock condensed or no dock at all. Yep. Condensed dock, condensed dock. Arc menu. I like arc menu. I actually, I think arc menu is a solid option. I don't know if it's still being maintained or not. If you're on GNOME and you want the traditional software menu and, you know, like the, that kind of start menu duplication, I have always liked arc menu. Um, Ooh, damn, that looks much nicer. Um, I think so too. No dock is better than any dock. That's, that's a choice. Um, it's not my choice. <laughs> I think it's, it's, um, for me, I, I think I like the dock because I like the ability to be able to like fine tune, like if I, if I need to pull my mouse out of somewhere and, and like actually just find a window real quick, I find that to be convenient to actually have the dock and be able to have that visualization of where things are. Um, and I feel like the system 76 dock is really solid. Um, not everybody's is. Okay. We're going to, we're going to click to the next. Okay. Top bar configuration. So I don't know if you can see this, but there is a workspaces switcher, which of course right now I don't think I have anything on there, and then an applications, which actually loads up the applications menu, which you can see doesn't look like that full screen GNOME thing that I know some people don't like and some people do. Um, I'm indifferent to it. Um, you can disable those buttons. So if you look, when I disable it, it goes away at the top left corner of the screen. And when I enable it, it comes back. Same thing with workspaces. Now on my production machine, I tend to actually disable both of them because I, I, I became addicted to the, um, the, the super key and a, which I think launches the application or no, that launches the, the workspaces. And I, I just, I go with that and it works just fine, but I'm going to leave these up for now. I think that's fine. And you can also move where the notifications are. So left, 
which is weird. I don't, I'm, I wouldn't do it that way, right? Which is great. I like it here, but I do wish there was an option. I think I mentioned this in my video where I reviewed the beta on the Pi. I wish there was an option to take this and slide it over to over here or maybe have the power icon to the right of it. I, I wish there was a little bit more tweaking, um, but I think this is good. I'm going to keep it center because it's kind of classy that way and then it's just where I'm used to looking for it. If I like tiling and stacking, why don't I use a window manager instead? Um, lots of reasons. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't love using a window manager directly on my laptops is because if if I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, let's say I'm going to a client and I have to, you know, futz with network settings in order to find their networks and troubleshoot and stuff like that. Um, a lot of that ends up being mouse driven in that moment. And that's just the workflow that I've been used to, you know, find going into the network settings and tweaking things there. I know you can do it on the command line. I literally am a system administrator and work with terminals. But if I'm on my laptop trying to figure out why somebody's network's not working, sometimes those graphical tools are just better for my workflow. And I like the GNOME graphical tools. I, th I think they're fine. I know you can configure something similar in like i3 or, or other window managers, but at that point, if I'm configuring a window manager to act like Cosmic, why not just use Cosmic? And that's why I end up sticking with this. Um, for my editing desktop, the one that I use most of the time, I, it's I, I like Pop OS because the software is the of the right vintage for me. Um, I, I like what's there, and frankly, I just use to the same workflow on my work laptop that I take out in the field with me, and my desktop which I use at home. And it just makes sense. Take us through installing DWM just for fun. Oh, geez, compiling, it's fun. Okay, I'm gonna hit next. Okay, launcher. I like launcher. I think launcher is good. Let's see if it's, yep, it's already set up so you can see it right there. Um, one thing that I do miss is finding files in here, like, like system-wide fuzzy search, you know, that, that kind of thing. I don't know that launcher does that yet. Um, that's something, you know, I, I would love to see. Um, but generally, like, I mean, I, if I'm, if there's an, I barely ever use the applications drawer. I just go in here and I type LibreOffice and I pull it up that way. And it's just fast. It's like Spotlight. Exactly. The mouse is bloat. Sure. Somebody says the mouse is bloat. Um... That's fine if you're if if you're used to not using a mouse for certain things. Um, I I'm a Vim user. I'm a Tmux user. I actually you know work with terminals constantly. Like I think I'm pretty like I my email client is Mutt. Um, but I'm gonna use the mouse every now and again. It just makes sense. I even bought one of these fancy mice, one of these trackball mice. So like I mean I'm I'm legit on both sides, I guess. Um, gestures. <laughs> I don't, I don't like gestures. I, gestures throw me off. Um, it's not my thing, but I know for some people it's like super important. They love being able to do like four finger left and right. And I, I, I just, I, my, my brain doesn't work that way, but that I don't want to dissuade anybody else from working that way. I think if that's how you work, that's great. Let's see. Terminal for Life says, I'm a big fan of terminals, too. Let's see. I'm going to go with dark mode, um, only because it's YouTube and that tends to, I think, look better on your screen. Um, on my screen, I often go between, depending on time of day or like eye strain and stuff like that. Vim, Mutt, not Emacs. Nope, I'm not an Emacs user. I am a Vim user. We are going to turn, I'm going to keep Wi-Fi off. I'm sure it works. I'm sure it's fine. Locations are, I'll keep it off for now. Um, I'll say Chicago. I'm 
I mean, I'm, I'm in Minneapolis, not Chicago, but it works. Ooh, connect your online accounts. Is this new? Um, or is it, at least is this new to Pop! OS? I don't remember seeing this in Pop! OS before. Um, this is kind of neat. Um, I mean, I know Ubuntu's had it. I know, like, I think Fedora has it, although I don't know if it pops up on the installer. Um, that is cool. Uh, people talking about editors in the, um, in the chat. Uh, somebody says, according to DistroTube, DT, I'm, I'm guessing means DistroTube, um, NeoVim is better than Vim. I've never used either. Um, it, I, about Vim, I think it depends. Um, I tend to use NeoVim on, uh, my desktop, uh, and Vim on servers. And that's mainly because I don't tend to use plugins on my servers. But then when I'm editing locally, I tend to want to use a bunch of plugins. And I, I just found that all the plugin instructions were referencing NeoVim. I don't think that means that you can't do either one, but I know there are some things NeoVim does a little bit cleaner with, um, like, management of things. So that's where I go. I, I think DistroTube had a, a, a thing about it. Um, and I think it was warranted. Like, I think, I think he was giving out good advice. Um, I just don't remember what that advice is. <laughs> um, let's see. I tend to like NeoVim for my personal. Um, I just think this is neat. Like, I'm just imagining, I mean, I don't have an exchange server spun up right now, but if I did, I might give that a try. Um, I'm going to skip it for now. Does it have an X cloud? It does have an X cloud. That is cool. What's Foursquare? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think it's like a check-in. Um, okay, all done. We're ready. All right. That was some rigmarole, let me tell you. Um, but I think we're good. I think we have, we have installed successfully. It only took an hour um, and two different laptops and a lot of capture card fun. And at some point my audio going dead, but that's exciting. Um, let's see. I'm happy if you're happy is my typical response. Use what works for you. That's exactly it. That should be the overarching theme in the Linux community is like, if you like it, that's good. If you don't like it, use something different. I'm, I'm all for that. So I had a couple of things I wanted to check. Let me just set this aside. You go over there. I wanted to check the GNOME version. So let's pull up settings and let's go to about. We are on GNOME 42 on X11. So that should answer a few different questions going on here. I don't think this supports Wayland out of the box, um, which, I mean, has its its benefits and its drawbacks. Um, I mean, I'm not a Wayland fanatic. When it comes to audio and recording audio, um, I think the Wayland and Pipewire ecosystem has a lot of advantages. But I've built my rig around Jack and X11. And so for me, I, I don't miss it as often. I'm also a pretty frequent user of the Barrier software, um, which lets you connect multiple I did a video about it, but you can use your keyboard and mouse on your main desktop and then move it to your laptops if you need to. And that doesn't work with Wayland yet, as far as I know. So that's a, that's a thing. Let's see. I don't understand why Wayland is so popular. Why change something that well works like X11? Um, basically security is a big thing. Um, the, the, the client server model has some inefficiencies and Wayland potentially fixes some of those inefficiencies. For me, it's not the biggest priority in the world. Um, but uh, at least in terms of my end users um, and what I end up using with it, um, my clients who work with uh, Linux software, um, you know, X11 forwarding is a thing. And so like that becomes a, a situation we have to evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, 
Yep, mixed refresh rates. That's another thing. I will say somebody pointed out Xorg is not the best when it comes to mixed refresh rates. Um, I can concur. If you're if your monitors don't don't sync up quite right, you you can you can run into some 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 bugs. That being said, is it the biggest deal in the world? No. Um, at least not to me. It might be to you, and that's that's fine. Let's see. What kind of rig do I have? Am I a musician? I am. <laughs> so I am a, I mean, I guess you'd call it indie rock. This is kind of the, the general vibe I do, but um, I record all the music for the channel. So if you've heard any of the music on the channel, it's, it's all me. Um, and uh, I play guitar and bass would be the big ones. And um, yeah, it's fun. It's a, it's a good time. I do a little bit of drums, but not, no, I'm not a good drummer. Um, let's see. Uh, is that good? Uh, let's see. Do some videos on producing music on Linux. I, I, I should, I could. Um, okay. I do want to, let's, let's, I don't know what's changed because I don't think the fine folks at System76 have put out a change log yet. Um, so I'm thinking maybe we just check out some, some of the basic apps and just kind of go through and see, see how it looks. Um, we got Geary. That's a classic email app. It comes with contacts and pop shop and calendar. It's all very exciting. Um, let's see office. Yeah, it's just Libra office. That looks good. I don't think it's anything too terribly fancy. It's very, um, basic. The USB flasher I like. Um, you, you probably can't see it because I'm in the way. Hang on. Just make sure you can still hear me. Okay, so the USB flasher is a program that I actually really like because um, with the USB flasher you can select an ISO and um, it, it's just baked in. Um, I think oftentimes with with these, I'm I'm pulling out like Etcher or something like that when I'm working with Raspberry Pis or if I'm making installation media or whatever. I like Popsicle. I actually think Popsicle is a really good option. One of the things that I really like about Popsicle is that it has its own SHA checker baked right in. So I always check my SHA sums at the after I download an ISO, and this you can check it automatically. It's, it's kind of magic, and I, I think that's super neat. I don't think Etcher has that last time I checked. Yep, Popsicle. I don't know how anyone else sets up Jack. I use my own custom setup because Ubuntu doesn't really know how to do it. I, um, Jason said that, that, um, Jack is challenging. Jack is exceptionally challenging. Once you get it, like, one of the reasons, you know, somebody said why why are you on pop OS and not switching to different desktop environments or different things or you know, like trying out a thousand different things? One of the reasons is that my audio workstation, once I set it, I don't want to change it. <laughs> it's kind of challenging. Um, and I, I basically just use USB interfaces for things into Jack and I let, I, I have Jack set up to go into my plugins or, you know, whatever other things I use. Um, I do a lot of actual analog equipment too. So that that's a key thing. Let's see. What else have we got? Um, let's try. You know what? I, I should do, just in case you haven't seen it, I'm going to do a demo of the tiling because the tiling is amazing. So there's this little icon here at the top that lets you turn on tiling. Let me remove my face. Okay, so you can see here when it's off, when I make a window pop up, it just pops up wherever. But then when I flick on the tiling switch, everything became a tiling setup and it's pretty slick. Now from here, I can turn on the active hint. I'm going to do that just so you can see more easily where I'm at, but I can type and then using the super key and left or the Vim shortcuts. If, if you do that, you can then go to the next one and here and down and here, and none of that does anything, of course. Um, 
but it's super fancy. Now, if I create a new, let's say I want to create a new uh, uh, window here. Um, let's say the browser, I can super key B to open up a browser window. It made it super small because it's right in there. But let's say I don't want it there. Let's say I want to move this onto here. I can drag and drop it right in there and it automatically created a stack. And now the stack, I can navigate with those same shortcuts. And this has proven absolutely critical for me if I'm on a laptop because there are lots of times, let me show myself, there are lots of times, or if you can imagine, um, I am in the field somewhere and I'm not going to have multiple screens set up, but I want that flexibility of like moving my windows around to exactly where I want. This is how I end up tending to work where now I can have a utility up here. Oh, yep, it's not installed. Well, let's do that. And then, um, you know, here I can have my editor. Oop, Vim's not installed. <gasps> well, you know what? Forget it. I'm just gonna do nano for now. So I can, I can do that and it works out just fine. Um, and so I can have my utility up here and say maybe that's my server. If I'm, if I'm editing, that might be my editing server or something like that. And then I can be looking up details here, like how to do long division. Sure. Let's pretend I'm learning how to do long division. Um, anyway, this, this workflow has become extremely critical to me and there might be some applications where, let's say, this doesn't work for me. Like, let's say I got an application, I, I don't know, um, Popsicle. Let's say I got Popsicle and, oh, it's, it's tiling and the tiling looks really weird and kittywampus. Well, I can exempt Popsicle by hitting this select. Oh, where'd it go? There we go. That was different. It didn't do the, uh, normally it stays upright, but that's okay. I don't know if that's a bug or just new behavior where it was trying to show. Is it trying to show my, all my workspaces? You know what? I wonder if the workspace switcher is broken. That's interesting. Normally when I hit this button here at the top and go to workspaces, it lets me see the different workspaces. And now it's not doing it. That's, I think we, I think we might have a bug. Yep, normally over here off to the side where the mouse is moving, you can see your workspaces. You can see the different, you know, like, like for example, oh, I'm stuck in it now. So here's a workspace, there's a workspace, there's a workspace, there's a workspace. Um, and it doesn't seem to be loading right now. So, but I do see, it looks like down here, you can't see. If you look right here above the dock, I can see a switcher. And it looks like the switcher thinks it's horizontal, but I'm moving vertically. So not sure exactly what's going on. I disable the vertical workspaces extension every time I install Pop! OS. I never do. I always use the vertical works workspaces and to me it, it looks good. Um, let's see. What else have we got? Um, looking at the comments here. Great. Put a browser in team. Uh, Jeremy. Yes. Let's put a browser in team. You know, I, I can. Um, I'm not gonna, but like what? Links? Sure. Let's do it. You know what? I haven't. We gotta, we gotta do apt update. That's, that's a lot of upgrades. Okay. Should we? Let's, let's do it. Let's see if it works. Okay, while well, that's working, should I play some Bop It? <laughs> I'm going to make that bigger. Let's do that. 
See how it, it automatically is adjusting? So pretty. Beat bop, one on one. Beat bop, solo. Okay, let's see. Someone ban, ban the spammer, please. Is somebody spamming? I'm not sure if this person's spamming. I kind of can't tell. Let's see. Veronica and the Fuzzy Penguins. Okay, thank you. Yep, I think that's the person I, I just removed. Um, okay. So. Beat Bob, pass it. Beat Bob, one on one. Beat Bob, solo. Let's see, we're, we're updating. I do know that Cosmic has tab layout. You can tab individual individual sections. Anybody else have questions while I'm bopping bopping? Okay, this is exciting. Auto rotation. Auto rotation of the actual window itself. Why didn't I do full upgrade? Um Let's see. Um There's a lot of debate on that. Uh I never update before installing. Is there ever a problem? Uh let's see. I'm I'm, I'm seeing a lot of comments. Okay. Do I use Linux in my day job? Let's start with that one. Yes, I do use Linux every day. Um, I am I am on Linux pretty much constantly. Uh, I do... Uh, looks like it's done. Um, I do a ton of... So I do Linux system administration. That's, that's a good chunk of what I do. But then I do all my development work on Linux as well, which makes sense because a lot of times the targets are... are Linux servers. Um, most of what I do is COBOL on Linux and COBOL on Linux x86, which is very particular niche. Um, as you can imagine, it's fun and exciting and can get boring at times. Um, I've been using apt dist upgrade. Yep. Okay. So there's full upgrade, there's upgrade, there's dist upgrade. Um, so Long story short with the whole upgrade versus upgrade versus upgrade is I learned it as you can just use upgrade and the difference with a typical installation is, is academic at this point. Um, if, if I was going to join a free software project, which would that be? Oh, if I was going to join a free software, it's whichever one would take me at this point. Um, have I tried Nix OS? Hi, hi Samuel. Um, Nix OS, I, I, the Nix package thing is so totally outside of my, my typical use. Um, I would try it and I would probably do a video about it um, if people want to. Rotation question is asking if I know if this version allows auto rotation. Um, I don't have an answer for you for that. I don't think I have a device that does auto rotation I because I'm, I'm imagining you need a gyroscope um, and I don't think I have it I, I don't think this device has that um, Nix OS live stream that sounds fantastic okay redox OS by Jeremy Solar I've wanted to try it I think that could be a lot of fun um, okay what was I install I know it says I get an update but sudo apt install links. Okay. So, so I got a browser up. <laughs> Let's move it so that you can actually see it. Um, so I've got here, here's a browser and let's go to 
Um, I think Jeremy Solar's website is optimized for this. I know I remember this. There we go. That is a website. <laughs> so I have the browser up. So yes, you can in fact browse out of Tmux or at least out of out of a terminal. Um, your mileage may vary. Um, but it does in fact work. Let's see. I need C matrix now. Yep, C matrix is a lot of fun. Okay, since I'm in Minnesota and I'm using the Lynx web browser, would that make it a Minnesota Lynx? That's our women's basketball team, if you didn't know. Um, now you do. Okay. So, I'm thinking, I'm thinking now my, you know, we've been at this for about 90 minutes. That seems like that's pretty good. Um, I do want to know if there's anything anybody would want to, uh, if, if there's anything you want to see me do on this laptop here real quick before I bring it down, or if you have any general questions, because I might be able to answer them for at least a few minutes here. Um, we've still got plenty of people on the stream, and I don't necessarily want to cut you off and send you home if you're not ready to be done. Um, Sixel-based browser. Okay, I was hoping you use some kind of Sixel-based browser, but I don't know how well. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, that could be a whole review in itself. I, I don't know what this is capable of doing here. Um, and yes, you can use links to see if people have designed accessible graphics and have alt text and stuff like that. That is absolutely a great use for links, and I do that pretty frequently. Um, I just purchased a System76 laptop. This is my first serious foray into Linux, but I was so sick of Windows. What's the best place way to learn Linux and Pop OS? Um, I tend to think of YouTube as being an excellent place to learn this stuff if you can actually see it and see how you know people like me actually behave with it and how it works. Um, it depends on what you want to do with Linux. If you just want to be an end user with Linux, I think System76, as an example, has a very excellent support knowledge base, which I think is pretty good. Um, they, if you want to become a system administrator, there is a book which I can't recommend enough. I'm gonna pull it down. Um, hang on, let's do, you can see this so that way I can pull this down and if something falls, it's not gonna be a disaster. Okay, all right, back to me. This book is the absolute quintessential, like, this should be required reading of any system administrator. This is the Unix and Linux system administration handbook. Um, it, it, I mean, it's like a thousand and some pages. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty hefty, but I learned so much from this series of books. This, they're on their fifth edition now. I think this is their most recent edition. Um, it is absolutely wonderful, and I just honestly can't recommend it enough. I'm constantly learning new stuff out of here, even though I probably at this point read it cover to cover. Um, every time I pick it up, it's like there's some new little tidbit in there, and it's it's amazing. Let's see. Uh, uh, comments. There are some issues with the Pop! OS beta installer. Trying the same hardware errors trying to install to VirtualBox. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I mean, my issue, I don't know if it was hardware or software or what, so... Pop! OS on the Raspberry Pi 400 is really superb. I don't doubt it one bit. I bet that's super fantastic. Um, very close to daily driving. It still need Windows for a couple games. It, it, and Affinity. Affinity refuses to do a Linux port. That... Oh, I'm all blurry. Ooh, unblur myself. Um, the affinity thing, I I feel. What is here? Go find me. Find my face. Come on. Why am I all blurry? Why do you blurry? Come on. Find me. What is happening with my cat? With my video card? I'm like a blurry mess. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay. Um, yeah, Affinity, I, I wish Affinity figured it out because I, I think they should. Let me do that and bring it back. Maybe kill one of my lights? Why am I blurry? No. Stop being blurry. 
What a weird thing. Yeah, autofocus sucks. I'm 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 trying to find a new camera, folks. Um I'm on a Logitech C920 and it's is not great. Um sharpness is a bourgeois concept. <laughs> I like it. Um I don't know what just happened. Let's see. I'm trying to mute it and see if maybe I can why on earth did I get so... <laughs> is this going to be the end? <laughs> this is how I should end it. Um, can I manual focus? No, I don't think this has a manual focus. I can try to... Ch I'm going to try changing the resolution. See if that fixes it. Because we... Oh! Did that work? I think that worked. Okay. How how weird is that? Um, try turning it off and turning it back. I did. It didn't work. Um, threaten the camera. It knows. Let's see. Uh... I have a Bay... Okay, it was audio question. Okay, Behringer XR18 and trying to use as an audio device in Linux drives me crazy. Every time a program re resets the audio routing, um, I, I've never had good luck with Behringer stuff. Um, I find Presonus works pretty well. I don't know what it is about them. It's, it's, it, I just, just seems to work out really well. Um, stand still. Now you won't know if I froze. Let's see. Yep. Okay. Export Affinity Photo files into PSD format, and then you can access them in Krita. I've done that. That, that works out re reasonably well. Um, let's see. Um, sounds like cheese. I don't, I'm not sure I, I understand that, but that's okay. I can see the chat, and I just realized not everybody can see the chat. Um, yep. Writing your own Jack scripts can be a thing. But this is, I think, where Wayland and Pulse Audio, like, or not Pulse Audio, um, Wayland and Pipewire, uh, that, that combination of things tends to be really good in my experience. Because I, I mean, I get just works level of, of comfort out of Fedora on, um, you know, Wayland and, you know, they, they, like, I plug it in and it just works. Um, and I mean, I, my main DAW at the moment is Bitwig, which is not open source, but it's awesome. And it comes with a lot of good features. Um, okay. So <sighs> that was fun, folks. That was a good time. I think, oops, do I, okay, hang on. We got one. We got another question. Silly question. Do I only use Linux even for entertainment and home? Um, I mostly use Linux. Let me put it this way. I use Linux in every professional standpoint of, of every part of my professional work, every part of my career. Linux on the servers, Linux on my desktops, Linux on my laptops. I have to support Windows machines. So I do keep a Windows box around, actually a couple of them, just to be able to troubleshoot some stuff. And every now and again, I get some weird software that comes with that. A lot of what I end up doing working with legacy systems tends to involve industrial hardware, if you can imagine it, like big giant machines and stuff like that. And sometimes that software, you know, a lot of times it's just serial and you, know, you can wrap it and do something di different on Linux or on something else. But a good chunk of the time, the software that's supported is only on Windows. And when that's the case, yeah, I, I have to bust out a Windows machine to get some utility done. So I'd say I'm probably 95% Linux. Um, I do all my development work on Linux. I do all my playtime fun stuff on Linux. If I'm going to watch a video on a computer, or play a game, it's usually on Linux. Um, I don't do a lot of multiplayer, though. So that, you know, your mileage may vary. Let's see. What was the reason the first install didn't go through? Okay, yep. So just to sum it up, in case you started at the beginning of the stream and then you forwarded it to the end of the stream to see what happened, the reason it didn't work right away was because the the computer that I was using is just atrocious. It, it's it's the the BIOS is all kinds of fiddly and like it doesn't work half the time. And I was able to get it working this morning and was thinking, oh, you know, it's working today. Maybe it'll work for this live stream. It didn't work for the live stream. It has nothing to do with Pop! OS. Let me put it that way. Because I, I run into this whether I'm installing Windows, whether I'm installing 
Linux. I ran into this. I used this computer in my barrier video when I installed FreeBSD, um, GhostBSD to be precise, an excellent FreeBSD distro that is worth checking out. And I, when I ran that, it I ran into the same problems. So it's 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 rough. Let's see. 90% Mac OS, 9% iPad OS, and 1% Linux, but that 1% is important. It hey, if if it works for you, it works for you. Okay. Terminal for Life asks, I have a question. What's it like to be a woman in a field which seems predominantly male-oriented? Do you find it challenging, especially online being a YouTuber? I've been curious for a while. Um, that's an excellent question. The I feel like, you know, just to throw this out there, the YouTube community has been amazing. Um, my, my experience with YouTubers, the people actually putting out this content, as well as um, just you all, the people who are checking it out, I mean, I, Every, everybody's great you know like honestly it's been it's been wonderful it's been a fantastic experience and I want to do more of it um the uh working in the field has its challenges um a lot of times uh I'm I'm told to uh call the developer and ask him to fix something when I'm the developer uh, that's, that's a thing that happens frequently. Or if you can let your IT guy know, it's like, um, I'm, I'm the person, like I'm, I'm the one who does it. Um, it's a lot of that and it, it, it drags you down at some point. Um, I'm, I'm experiencing less hostility now than I did at the very beginning of my career. And I think a lot of that probably just boils down to the fact that I, at this point, I've got a reputation, at least in the field that I work in. And when, when I walk in the room or when I join the chat or whatever, you know, people know they're there to see me or they're there to talk to me. And I, I think that makes a big difference. Um, it's hard to get started in this field though. Like it, that, I gotta say that, that was a challenge. A lot of people don't really expect you to be there for the technical stuff. And as you can imagine, that's fun. Devin says, hey, how are you? Been a while. Hi. Yeah, it's been great. Um, <laughs> it's fantastic. Let's see. Um, try working on the product. Yep, Addie works in television. Um, and she is one of two ladies in the department on, on the production side. I can't imagine. Um, I mean, I can, but not really. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's rough. There's bad eggs everywhere, though, is what Terminal for Life said in response. Yes. I absolutely, it, like, I think that it, there's bad eggs everywhere and you just got to deal with it. Um, PCI pass through an NVIDIA GP, I can't do this today, but um, ERXBout says, I want to PCI pass through an NVIDIA GPU into a KVM because Windows handles NVIDIA better while using an AMD GPU for the main system. Is that a good idea? I don't know. It might be. Um, it might not be. It might be a complete disaster which bricks everything you do. Um, I don't know your specific system. Uh, PCI pass-through is fun and using KVM with PCI pass-through can be pretty rewarding. There's a lot of videos on there uh, on the on YouTube about that already. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do one anytime soon only because GPUs are expensive and I don't want to buy a new one just for like, I, I mean, at this point I'd be buying something so old that it's either laughable or I'd be digging it out of the trash or something like to do every now and again. But, um, companies will ask me to recycle their old equipment and that is how I get a lot of really cool stuff. And, um, that's a lot of fun. Let's see. In what languages do I develop? Good question. Um, when I'm doing development project, you know, and I, I, I'll distinguish development from system administration. Development projects for me tend to be COBOL, um, at least right now. And that's mainly because of the customers that I've curated over the years are, are COBOL people. Um, historically, it was, um, you know, like Python. It tends to be, you know, either the Python on the actual, like, building out a Python application in the terminal or building something out on the web. Um, I've done a fair bit of Django. Um, and then going back even further, it was PHP. And it's been a while since PHP. Like, I don't think I've even touched PHP 8. And I've been meaning to, so it might be something I do. Let's see. 
Um, all right. Okay. COBOL and Fortran, I heard NASA is hiring. I'm sure they are. So the, here's the thing about my COBOL. My COBOL experience is on x86, which is weird. And it's a niche and it's a fun niche, but it's a niche. And that being said, it doesn't let me become a mainframer. You know, I'm, I'm not a mainframer. I, I'm mainframe adjacent. Um, if I were doing it again, Again, I might try to take, you know, like courses in mainframe work and actually go that route. Um, that's probably how I would do it, but I, I, it's too late now at this point. Uh, battery backup and Pop! OS. I want to shift my laptop Windows to Ubuntu. If Pop! OS is good, then why not use Pop! OS? Well, I think Pop! OS is great. Um, battery backup if you're talking about ups stuff i mean i find that like the, like a uninterruptible power supply um i tend to find it works reasonably well if you're using command line stuff which is how i tend to work um if you're talking about its actual battery usage like on a laptop um i think it's comparable to a windows experience um you might have, depending on the model laptop, you might have issues optimizing, so you'll just have to tweak the settings a bit. Um, but I, I don't really find any major issue. You, I use Pop! OS on my, on my laptop, and it's great. What's my favorite flavor of basic? Um, at the moment, it's, it's, com it's the, uh, I'm classic Commodore 64. That's, <laughs> that'd be the one. Um, historically, it was QBasic, which isn't, quite the same thing. Let's see. Um, got people talking about fourth. I don't know enough about fourth to really get into it at the moment. Um, do I use TLP to optimize battery on Pop! OS? Nope. I don't. I, 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 I just, I, so my Pop! OS machine, my main Pop! OS laptop is a System76 laptop heavily recommend it. I use the Galago Pro. I don't have it here in front of me, but it is absolutely amazing and is worth checking out if you're considering it because it is Linux optimized, out of the box, open firmware, ready to go. Couldn't be happier with the end result. And honestly, if you buy from System76, you get top tier support. Just the, like I can email somebody from System76 and I'm getting a real live person contacting me to troubleshoot it. I've even bought a server from them for a customer and they love it. They're absolutely thrilled with the end result. Do I know Lisp? Um, no, I don't know Lisp. Um, I don't have to work with it, so that's good. How do I pursue a side gig and career towards system administration. Um, well, I can tell you how I got into it was, um, you know, I was actually on the development side of projects, but was adjacent to the people who were doing the, the actual administrative work. And then I started working in development freelance and it was all development, but then customers would say, hey, while you're here, we got some weird question about a Linux server and I just knew a lot of Linux and that it just kind of blossomed, I guess. Um, I didn't actually ever get a degree in, in, in anything Linux systems or anything like that. It just kind of came to me as a result of my experience and the fact that I knew what I was doing. Um, if you really want to get into system administration, and it's a lot of fun, um, and it, it pays well, and it's good stuff, um, networking is really important, um, and throwing yourself out there to, uh, you know, like local companies who do that sort of thing and saying, hey, this is something I'm interested in, um, and you, you might be able to, you know, you know work part-time doing some of the networking stuff for, you know, something like that. I mean, it can work. Have I tried Dino? Um, uh, I haven't. I've been meaning to. I'm mostly on Node um, because it's what I learned. But again, remember, I work in COBOL, so it's it's less exciting. Let's see. Um, Pop! OS is definitely dev friendly. Yep, Ian says that and couldn't agree more. It's, it is definitely dev friendly. Um, let's see. 
Okay, this has been a lot of fun. We've been at this for an hour and 45 minutes. I think it's time to wrap up. So again, thank you so much for checking it out. Um, real quick, let me, I gotta, I gotta do the merch store thing. So let me show you. I got t-shirts for sale, VK, vkc.sh slash merch. You can see I've got the fancy cheat sheet shirt, which is currently our number one seller, which if you're a fan of Ethernet is a um, fun thing to do. Um, definitely worth checking out. And, you know, just again, thank you so much to all of you for tuning in, checking it out and dealing with my troubleshooting issues. If you have any questions, either leave a comment or, you know, that website vkc.sh does have my email address on it. You can, you can shoot me an email and, you know, I'll see if I can get back to you. Um, and anyway, thank you. Linux is awesome. And so are you. Have a great rest of your day, folks. Thanks.